Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar, Working Smarter and Faster in Applied Epic. My name is Lauren Roberts, and I'm the Director of Agency Consulting here at Kite Tech. Our presenters are going to be Kelly Halfpap and Jenny Honigan, and I know they have lots of great content to share for you. For those of you joining us for the first time today and not sure what Kite Technology is all about, we are a managed IT service provider and a consulting firm serving independent insurance agencies and other businesses across the country. We've been around for almost 30 years now, and what sets Kite Tech apart from other IT providers is our expertise within the insurance industry. Many of our staff have previous backgrounds working in insurance, giving us that extra insight on what agencies today require to operate at a high level. Our agency consulting team focuses on helping agencies use Epic more efficiently so they, get, they can get the most from their investment and improve their performance. We find that many agencies underutilize Applied Epic and don't take advantage of the many features that it offers. Renewals Manager is a great example of that. Also listed here are some of the services that we offer for IT. Uh, we provide a comprehensive IT management and support as well as partner IT services and consulting for those agencies that have internal IT staff. If you'd like to learn more about our IT or consulting services, please send us a message through the Q&A panel and we'll be sure to reach out to you. We will also share a Calendly link that you can use to schedule an initial conversation to learn more about our services. Okay, without further ado, I'm very excited to hand the presentation over to Kelly and Jenny so they can introduce themselves. Ladies, it is all yours. Thanks, Lauren. Hi, everyone. I'm Kelly Halfpath, agency consultant here at Kite Tech. I've been with Kite for a little over three years, but worked within the insurance industry as a CSR and account manager for five years before that. At Kite, I primarily handle Epic Accounting support and training, as well as audits and workflow development. And hello, I'm Jenny Honiken. I'm also an agency consultant with Kite Tech. I joined about six months ago um, in April, and in my previous life, I was a crop insurance account manager, and then um, later our agency's Epic administrator. Um, and I also served on the board of the Carolinas chapter of the Applied Client Network. Um, here at Kite, I specialize in Epic migrations and optimizations. Today, we're going to cover um, the following lear learning objectives. Um, we're, uh, Kelly's going to do the first half. I'm going to do the second. Um, we're going to show you how to customize your column, set your field defaults, your user options so that things are more automated for you. We're going to go through um, some shortcuts and teach you how to save some clicks without having to go into a policy or go into an activity. We're going to teach you the search where bar, just all of the features that you can use to search those long lists of things that you find throughout Epic. Um, we're going to teach you how to better organize your attachments uh, using folders and even not using folders, scandalous. Um, and then we're going to uh, teach you to stay on track with your activities for follow up, use that home screen. Um, and then we're going to show you how to use your access button um, to quickly locate some things that you need. And uh, at the end of, of each one of our sections, we're going to have some Q&A. Um, but for now, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly and let her get started. Awesome. Thanks, Jenny. So like Jenny said, we're going to uh, start off by customizing uh, your EPIC system. So whether you are new to EPIC or are pretty familiar with working in the system, you always want to make sure you have it set up and customized to make it most efficient for you. This includes your home screen, your field defaults, your quick links, column fields. You know, you're in EPIC every day. And so to make your daily workload easier, why not customize the different areas so that they work best for you? So I'm going to switch us over to our demo database in Epic, and let's start with the home screen. So up here, uh, you'll see well, in, on the screen, you'll see the different sections, and you can uh, change the view. You can make them larger or smaller, depending on what you, uh, what you prefer. So starting from the top, let's look at activities. Do you have your column set up to display the, most, the information most pertinent to you? So the ones you see here are the ones that I personally find most important, gives me enough information. But if you go to select columns in the right-hand corner, there are more options for you to select or deselect depending on what you want to see. You can set your order by clicking the arrows here, or if you just go into just back to the main account, you can drag and drop. 
If you are on a team or typically handle a person's accounts while you're out of the office, you can view their activities by going into the customize view link and then this view other activities uh, tab. If you don't see any names listed here, uh, they need to be added to your personal Epic account in Ep uh, personal Epic account. So, and that may need to be done by management. So, and that includes your view others, uh, view other employees tasks as well. So if you don't see names listed on either of these tabs, but feel that you need to uh, make sure that you discuss that with management. And then the activities to display tab here, again, you can set up what activities you want to see that day. Do you want to see everything open through today, which is typically the standard, or plus a few days to see what's upcoming. Viewing a few days in advance is great for when you've got something like an upcoming vacation or you're going to be out of the office and want to make sure that everything is taken care of or assigned to someone while you're out. You can view activities just with just the uh, follow up date of today or a select date range. Down here, you can select to see specific activities, but I would not recommend keeping that as a default since you want to see the big picture. You wanna see everything that needs to be taken care of for all of your accounts. So moving down, the, moving down the screen, you'll see activity at a glance. So with an activity highlighted, it will show you the association. So if say for instance, this one is associated to the policy, it will give you the type of policy as well as the policy number. If, uh, if it's in there as well, if it's entered onto the uh, policy application, you'll also see the premium payable section uh, information as well. And then this view over here, again, with an activity highlighted, will show you uh, the last note entered on an activity, or you can toggle the view to see if there's any tasks assigned for that specific one. All right, then down at the very bottom in this section is your reports quick view. Again, this may need to be set up by management, but this will give you quick access to reports that can be helpful for your daily, weekly, or even monthly workload. This could include an expiration report or missed renewals report, um, or if you're a producer, your producer commissions report. So again, discuss with management what reports would be helpful for you to have some quick access to. And then finally, your new waiting section. Uh, so if that will list anything that's been uploaded and it's, it's still unrouted, but it's assigned to you to handle. So if you have anything in this unrouted section, you can click on the link. It will take you to the unrouted or the document management screen. Sorry about that, there we go. So it'll take you to your document management screen where you see here, I have one unrouted attachment and now I can decide, do I want to attach it to that uh, account or activity? Maybe I want to reassign it to someone else. So you can kind of choose what you want to, uh, how, what you want to do with those unrouted items. So now that we've gone over the home screen, let's discuss how you can customize this further as well as other areas of Epic. So if you go into configure, and then user options. We're gonna talk about three main areas where you can set up your defaults. So again, starting with the home base, there's different tabs where you can set up what you want your home screen to look like. So again, this is the uh, items to display, select or deselect the ones that apply to you. This is your activity defaults. Your report quick view here, you can't add reports here, but you can toggle the, the order or take any away that may not apply to you anymore. Notifications as well as new waiting. So I touched on that briefly and I talked about unrouted attachments, but say, you know, your, your agency doesn't really use unrouted faxes and that was selected, but you do want to uh, have unrouted SMS as an option. So you can select or deselect what applies to you. All right, moving down to field defaults. So this section allows you to default information to pre-fill when it's always the same. So what I mean by that is say I have a client ad workflow. If I'm in commercial lines, I only work in commercial lines. I can set it up so every time I add a new account, it will always be business. Commercial will always be selected. I can also, if I'm in a, I work for a specific, specific branch, I can set that up so that it's pre-filled for me, as well as my servicing role. I can have my name listed here as the client service rep. Even if you work, if you work for a specific producer, you can set that so that that's always the option every time you, you add a new client or add a new account. This saves you time as well as minimizes the risk of human error because again, this information will just be pre-filled for you. 
And then finally, we're going to uh, talk about quick links. So if you aren't familiar with what quick links are, if you go to look up an account, down here at the bottom are your quick links. And this kind of this gives you a, a lot of information about a, a client without even needing to open up that, that file yet. So if you don't see this at the uh, down at the bottom, it might mean because the double arrows here um, have that drop down. So just click on the arrows, the up arrows to bring that up. And you can see some information here uh, like who's servicing this account or maybe their current policies. So you can set up Obviously, it looks like everything here is selected, but you can set up what you want to see for your quick links. So if I don't want to see, you know, relationships or open opportunities or anything like that, you can select or deselect what you want to see down there at the bottom. Okay. So to further customize Epic for you, you want to make sure to check the select columns options in every area in Epic where it's available. There are different options depending on what area of the client file that you are in. So be sure to check those out. And what I mean by that is in attachments here, I'm going to go the last 18 months, oh, last six months, uh, the select columns options are different than your select columns options on the policy screen. And you want to set those up in each screen where, where available so that you are given right on your screen the most information you know, about that specific attachment or about a policy, because that's the goal. You want everything at a quick glance. You also want to save your filter defaults whenever that is an option as well. It's an option in your, I believe it's, it's an option in your attachments. So you can click on the filter defaults, use this as a default. So what I mean by that is I have my default set to uh, view the last six months. So every time I open a client file, it's going to view the last six months of attachments. But in areas like transactions, you have the opportunity to override, you can use as a default, and also override existing filters for clients. That means that across the board, when at this view will always be what you, the first thing that you see uh, anytime you're in any client file. And this only applies to you. So your coworkers may have a different view, uh, view filter options, but your options will never override theirs. Going back real quick, let's scroll down here. So we've talked about that. All right, so now we're gonna talk about saving clicks with shortcuts. So you can click on any column header in Epic and it will obviously, it will filter by that column. And then once you, I'm gonna clear my filter real quick. So I'm gonna start an activity. So I, once I, if I filter by the code, and then I start typing in, say, I want to see all of the binder activities on this on this account. So if I start typing in BI, it, sh it will take me to all of the binder activities um, in that section. And then the same goes for you can use that option uh, for, say, adding a client uh, po like a policy application in Epic. So if I wanted to add a new policy, let's start this over from the beginning. So if I wanted to add a new policy, and I know that it's a commercial umbrella. I can just type in CU and then tab. It will automatically pre-fill the rest of that application for me. As well, it also applies to PPE. If I, if I know I'm writing it through Travelers, I can type in TR and then tab, and it will pre-fill that for you. Now, if the right PPE didn't show up when you did that, you can just re-highlight that. I clicked uh, Shift tab. It takes me back up to that last uh, section, and this is on your keyboard, and click the down arrow, and again, now you can find the one, the PPE that's appropriate or that you want to select. Okay. All right. So use that tab, um, that use that tab button on your keyboard. That's going to be very helpful with uh, completing fields in Epic for you without you having to type all that information in. So this also applies to your calendar. So I'm writing this new policy and I actually want it, it's actually going to be written effective October 30th. I don't have to type in any forward dashes. I don't even have to type in the year. As long as the date that you are entering in is the current year that you're in, Epic will fill that in for you. So I'm going to type in 10.0.3.0 and then tab. It will automatically fill the rest of that date in as well as the expiration date. So be, get familiar with using your tab button um, on your keyboard. It really is helpful with just pre-filling or completing the fields for you. 
so sometimes uh, you know that a you know that um, a lot of workflows are there's event driven workflow activities, but sometimes you have to add a manual activity. Say a, a customer calls in just with a question, it has nothing to do with a workflow. Anywhere in the client file, if you're in the policies or attachments, if you just click F9, it will start a new activity for you. And then there you can choose if you want to associate it to a policy or an account, you can kind of move through and complete the adding that activity. Another shortcut is, you know, say you're somewhere in Epic and you're stuck. You kind of need a little refresher about, you know, what this something means or just kind of want to go to that Epic help file real quick. Just uh, select F1 on your keyboard and it will open up the client or the help file for you. So let me, oh, there it goes. Sorry about that. And it will also filter down in the help file to, you know, depending on what area in Epic you're in. So I was on the policy screen and I, uh, I clicked F1. It already automatically filtered down to the policy section on the help file. Another way to just kind of have a little shortcut is remember, especially in the policy screen, uh, double click is basically editing. So you don't have to click on the little edit pencil. You can just double click and it'll open that policy as well as right click equals action. So if I have a policy highlighted and I click on right click, I'm getting the same options as if I highlighted the policy and went up here to actions. So a nice little way to save your shortcut to have a little shortcut. Oh, right. And then don't forget about your navigation panels. So when you are looking up an account, you don't have to double click on that account first, which will open up the account detail, and then you have to go through the different areas in Epic. You can just have that account highlighted and then go to what area you need. So you don't have to just double click to open it up. It will automatically, as long as it's selected or highlighted, you can just go to the different areas of that client file that you need to access. And then finally, don't forget uh, little shortcuts with the locate uh, with the locate button and the home button. So these little drop down arrows, the one next to the locate button, this is it will save the past 20 accounts that you were in. So if you have to toggle back and forth between an account or you just closed an account, you need to go back into it. You don't have to go back to the locate uh, screen and search type them in. You can just click on this down arrow and find the last account that you want to access. And the down arrow button next to the home screen will show all of the navigational panel options that are, is on your home screen. So you don't have to go back to the home screen and then click on these navigation panels anywhere you are in Epic. So I'm going to go back to my client file, but now I kind of want to go back into configure. I can just click on that drop down arrow button. So you don't have to keep going back and forth to your main screen, those main screens. Okay. All right. So we talked about that. And now we're going to talk about searching in Epic. So just like how the um, just like how the column or select columns options change depending on where you are in Epic, so do the search options. So if I my options for searching in attachments are going to be different if I'm trying to search for something on the policy screen. So, oops, sorry about that. And searches are based on your columns. So that's another reason why columns, having your select columns, um, the ones that you want selected, will help you with finding something in Epic. So if I am going to go back into activities and say I'm going to, let's go all the way back up. And I'm saying, okay, I want to find that, those binders. Again, I want to find all those binder codes. I'm just going to type in BIN so that I get all of the options. So here's all my binders, but now I want to see, well, I want to see Sarah's activities. So I'm going to type in who owner and then Sarah. It didn't give me anything because searches can be compounded. So I, my first search was for the binder activities and then my second search was for Sarah. So if she doesn't have any binder activities associated to her, nothing's going to come up. But if I just want to see everything that Sarah has, I don't have to clear my search. All I have to do is go into my this little funnel right here, and I can select which uh, search filter uh, to to delete. So you don't have to. So I'm, I'm going to delete the binder ones, and now I have I see all the activities associated to Sarah. So be sure to use that funnel. And if it's if your search bar is blue, that means a search has been performed. So you have a you have a search filter on this screen. So 
remember that before that searches can be compounded. So if you want to compound, compound the search, great, but if not, make sure to um, always come back in here and delete the ones that you don't want to see. All right, so that was a lot of information. Do we have any questions? Kelly, I'm so glad you asked because one <laughs> I can't answer that and it needs to be uh, displayed. So um, I have a question here from Joshua. He um, is interested in knowing how to configure uh, emails to either generate an activity uh, or um, force them to attach to an activity. So one piece, um, if you could go into Epic for me real quick, I sure. want to show something to users that I've been recommending to uh, a lot of my clients. If you go into user options and uh, field defaults, it's in field defaults, um, and your attachment activity add workflow, Okay, perfect. So right here in this section, um, this is a, a user based configuration, um, you'll see that it says attach to activity. So if your procedures for the agency are to attach to the workflow activity for everything, um, you definitely want to have that selected. However, there are some areas in Epic that still will default to the account or the policy, um, unless you check that little box right next to attach to activity. Uh, what that will do is um, anytime you are adding an attachment in Epic, it will always select activity as the default. So um, it will force your users or at least remind your users that they have to go find the activity that this should be associated to when they're attaching um, versus um, you know, just defaulting to policy or account or whatever else there is. Um, so that's it for that one. Um, and then of course, uh, in if you wanted an activity to generate automatically as an organization, um, you would have to configure that in activities and events um, in Epic. Awesome. Thanks so right. much. I'm going to give you the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, I had a question earlier. I think it would be nice to uh, show this. From your home screen, can you resize the boxes um, again? Uh, I think sure. we touched on that, but you'll see the little thing. Yep, yeah. you'll see the different areas, this little, um, when you hover over it, you'll see this little, your, your cursor will change and that tells you that, gives you the option to drag and drop. You can resize, um, you know, the different little boxes on your home screen. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and we had another question, can you resize the boxes from within like attachments and activities? Um, I do not believe you can. Uh, I tested it out, but I'm in the browser version, so I don't know if it's available. I know, yeah, I don't think you can do that in this area, no, unfortunately. Um, that would be nice. I have lots of other questions, but I'll keep answering over here for you because I know you guys have so much information to share and I don't want anybody to miss anything. So Kelly, back to you. Awesome. Thanks, Lauren. Well, I'm actually going to hand the webinar over to Jenny, who's going to take it from here. Now we are sharing a database. So Jenny will be sharing my screen. So there may be a delay in getting us switched over to her control. So just bear with us. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's a delay, I'll take over and answer more questions. <laughs> All right. While you guys are switching around then, let me help you out. Um, we have a question here from Jerry. Jerry says, does Epic have the equivalent of TAM's conglomerate feature? Ooh. Yes, it does. If you go into the account detail screen, um, down at the bottom, towards the bottom of the screen, there is a section called relationships. Now you can configure those over and configure if you want them a little bit more customized, like what type of relationship but relationship is the equivalent of the, the old conglomerate in TAM. Good question. Um, all right, so activities. Activities actually have three purposes. Um, a lot of times we just think of activities as let's you know put a note in there, um, but you actually do want to put a note in there. You want to document, and um, you know in insurance we always talk about ENO. You want to document everything all the time, forever, everything. Even if they just bring you chocolate chip cookies, put it in Epic. Um, if you want to um, follow up. So you have um, a task to do. You want to use your activities to follow up. So you put your date in. Um, 
And uh, that's the day that you follow up on this activity. And then also finally for reporting. So you want to be able to run a report of how many times, you know, a certain event happened. Um, so those are, that's the three purposes of activities. So your activities are either system generated or they're manual. Um, a system generated activity is an event that happens in Epic, something that automatically um, an activity that automatically generates, like you actions renew, you get the RENR activity, and that's where you can follow up on your renewal. If you add a new policy, APOL, the download sends an endorsement, you get your DPCH, things like that. These automatically happen. Epic generates this activity for you. And then you have your manual activity, which Kelly showed you with the F9 key. Sometimes you'll have to add a manual activity. You're not working on a major workflow. Um, somebody has a billing question midterm. They want to know the cost of adding a vehicle. Um, they need to check requests, things like that. It's not going to be based on a major workflow activity, um, major workflow event. So you need to add that activity in there. All right. What you need to do with your activities, you, you use this as your to-do list. You want to stay on top of it. Um, so on your home screen, you only want to see the activities that are due that day. You don't want to overwhelm yourself with six months out or anything like that. Just keep this as your to-do list. Um, if you're not working in Epic, you know, if you have a job that you don't work in Epic, you'll use like Outlook's to-do list or something. Use your activities like that. So triage them by managing them from the home screen. Um, look and see which ones are the most important. Um, wh what do I have to do today? What do I do not have time for? If you don't have time for your activity today, then um, you can change the follow-up date and um, ch or change the who owner or whatever. Um, if you're going on vacation, you know, you can plan ahead. Kelly showed you the shortcut to um, for your activity views and you can see what's going on for the next seven days so that you can reassign them to somebody else if there's something major coming up. Um, always do the urgent, um, the urgent items first as well. Um, and then your EDOC, your download activities, those are just notifications. So you don't have to do anything with them. They're just letting you know that something's happened. There's a message from the carrier or whatever. Look at them, address the situation, and then close them. Clear those out so that your activity list doesn't get overwhelming. You don't want to be overwhelmed by just a number of activities you don't have to do anything with. Only leave them open if you need to follow up. Um, if you're If you're not following up, then then just close them up, close them out, and use your main workflow activity. Um, use your appropriate follow-up dates. So if you're not expecting somebody, if your client's out of town until next week, don't set your follow-up date till tomorrow. Set it up for next week. And um, just document everything. That's what your system's designed for, so do it. I'm going to walk through some of this. So here is your home screen. And when you right click, now Kelly told you that actions and right click are the same thing. The home screen is the one place or one of the very few places where they're not the same. If you click actions here on the home screen, you can only change the password or close the activity. If you click, um, if you right click here, then you're going to be able to do a lot more things. And this is where you can work your activities. You can close them. You can add a note. Um, add a task. So a task is just a breakdown of an activity. Say you're working on something and you need um, a coworker to follow up on something for you. You can add a task, assign it to them. The activity will remain in your possession, will remain on your home screen, but will also show up on theirs and they'll see that they have a task assigned. Um, you can change the follow-up date. You can change the who owner, assign the activity completely to somebody else. Um, you can view all the notes, which is one of my favorites. Um, and then you can also take ownership. If this is, if you're viewing someone else's activity on your home screen, you can take ownership from here. Let me show you this view all notes though. This is the, one of my favorites. Um, is this my correct activity that I set up for us? Um, so when you close, you can actually add the note. We like to default our activities um, in configure um, if they're going to be closed to successful. Um, just because that's one less click that we have to do, you can put your note in here and click finish. You can just add a note and that's it. 
here's the add a task where you give the task um, a name, you assign it. And then that will show up down here. And if you toggle, you can see the last note. Um, you want to change the follow-up date, you can just do that from here. This one, this activity is overdue. I've not done a good job of working my activities. I'm going to change it to, um, to tomorrow because I'm doing the webinar today. I don't have time to do this activity today. So when I click that, it's going to pop off of my screen and it'll show back up tomorrow. Um, you can also change the who owner, reassign it to somebody else. Pretty easy. You just select their name or if you know their code, um, this is their EPIC code and not by their first name. So you have to kind of know their EPIC code there. Ooh. And then this is one of my favorites, view all notes. So I can go in and I can read all of the notes for this activity. I put everything to do with this um, adding a policy on this one activity. It shows, to, it shows it to me, the newest one um, first. If you want to read from what happened first, then you can go down and you can read all of the notes that happened on that adding the policy all in one place. I didn't have to open the activity. That's pretty cool. Um, and then again, like Kelly showed you, you can see what your last note was so that you, when you go to follow up, you're like, okay, this is where I was because you work on a lot of policies, a lot of things happen. All right, so that's basically your... Um, activities and working those from here. If you want to get into the activity itself, double click the activity to open it. Here's your view all notes again here. Same thing as on the home screen. You can use the search bar just where Kelly showed you the search where instead of having to click on every single one and see if you're looking for a note that contains Bob, then you can find the notes for Bob. and clear the filter out. If you put the contact name and contact information in here, if you make sure that you put it in when you start an activity, then on your home screen, you choose these as two of your columns, then you don't even have to go into the activity to find Bob's phone number. And um, a lot of you have like VoIP that's through your computer. You can just click on the link and then call call them straight from the activity. Now we're going to do some attachments. And when I go to locate Bob Cromer, I look him up and I want to see his attachments. Here's another trick that we haven't shown you yet. You, a, a lot of people are tempted to double click here and that will open up your account detail, but you can actually just go to the section here. So you've saved yourself one click. So here you are in your attachments. Um, one of the, the one of the easiest things that you can do is to um, set naming conventions for your agency. So like these, these are system generated, so that doesn't help. But like on in this case, we've got a summary of insurance, but this isn't super helpful because I don't know what policies that that's for. I could come over here and see a policy number. But if you set your naming conventions where you have maybe a policy type or um, something that's a little bit more identifiable, that's going to be really helpful, especially if everybody's naming their attachments the same way. A good um, rule of thumb is to maybe put the effective date, like the policy description, the type of the, of the um, attachment, that kind of thing. Um, you want this labeled clearly enough that you don't have to open it because as we know, we try and double click and open these attachments. Sometimes it takes a while, especially if there's a lot on a policy. So you want to be able to look and you want to be able to know what's inside. Um, when you have an email, always change the description on an email. Sometimes somebody will email you um, and it'll just say hello or whatever. So when you are dragging and dropping that email, the subject line is going to stay hard coded in there, but there's a place to change the description for the attachment. Always change the description for the attachment. Any document that's going to be used historically, like a policy document itself, um, photos of a property, that kind of thing, anything that you're going to look through endorsements, you want to put that in a folder. 
we recommend do not junk up your folders with correspondence and things like that. I know that we all live in the Windows world where we want to file everything neatly in folders. It's okay in Epic for things to not hang to not be in a folder. Let them just hang out there. All of that correspondence back and forth. When you go to your attachments and you go to the folder view, and this is our demo database, so it's just it's going to be messy. But you want to go to um, if you want to go to the policies and look at the deck pages, you want you want just the deck pages for all the different terms. That way you can access them really quick. You can see from year to year what happened. You don't want to junk up this policy folder with a bunch of correspondence. And I know that Epic comes out of the box with correspondence folders and things like that. But um, I would say just put the put the most important things in a folder and everything else just kind of leave out. Um, we um, we suggest that you attach just general correspondence to an activity instead of the policy. You can just drag and drop if you have an activity open. Um, you can just drag and drop right to the activity just like you do the policy. Um, save dragging and dropping onto the policy for those important policy documents, for the policy itself, the endorsement itself, and audit. And we recommend that you set, uh, set up like activities for um, like a policy received, an endorsement received, um, an audit received activity that's that's associated with that um, attachment event, at attachment event. Um, that way you'll have um, you'll have some uh, activities associated with that already. So attach the policy documents to the policy, um, workflow documentation to the activity. And we always say too, um, and I will show you this. I added this um, business auto yesterday. So when you add when you um, when you first add the policy, you get that add um, that add um, policy a p o l activity. And I know the tendency, and we we want to like add an activity for everything, but for for efficiency's sake, if you would just take that ADOP or ADP, APOL activity and add your um, your notes, all your notes to that, then if you do that, then you can actually use the access button. You click on access and then activities. You'll see this is going to filter just the activities for that policy that are open. Here we are, and it tells me that I have notes and I, I put notes only on this activity. So my activity screen is a lot easier to see the event of writing that new business. All of the information is right there. It's, um, it's easy to find. You can see that I've attached to the policy. If I want to drill down even farther and see these attachments, that's a, the attachments on the policy. Then you'll see the emails that we um, that me and Bob Cromer sent back and forth to each other and the underwriters emails, they're all there. So you're able to start with the policy, drill down to the activity first, and then drill down to um, the attachments from the activity. And so that way, if you're on the policy and you've attached that way, then you click access and then attachments. And the only thing that should be attached to the policy itself should be the policy document, which I did not have a policy document and I didn't put a fake one in there. Um, but that that would um, show every just the uh, the policies or the attachments for that policy. All right, let me see what I have missed. Um, just always pay attention where you're attaching. Um, policy documents on the top uh, on the um, policy, documentation on that workflow activity. Um, always start from the policy screen. You can also access your transactions from here. You can see that I have not invoiced my new business auto policy. Um, so it's filtered out here. If you want to get back, you can go back to your um, default view there. Um, if you end up putting it on, um, putting an attachment on your account detail screen or somewhere else, then you're not able to use that access. So this using that 
filing things the, the way that we recommend will help you to drill down and use that access button. Now, I, I've reached the end of my part of the presentation. Are there any questions that we have for these sections? Because that was kind of a lot too. Coming back. <laughs> You're coming back. All right. Back. Um, we had some feedback, actually. Uh, someone was very entertained by the fact that you said the attachment folders was scandalous. Oh, uh, yes. So I wanted to let you know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just always want to put things in a folder, you know, it just it works really well in Windows, but not so much in Epic. We all loved it. So <laughs> I believe Kelly had a couple of questions that she wanted to answer live. Um, do you want to grab those, Kelly, first? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, we had a ton of really good questions come in, so we'll get through as many as we can with the time we have left. But mm -hmm. um, so someone yeah. asked, uh, they don't utilize tasks, but they want to know the intended use of it. I thought that was a pretty good question. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So... Jenny, if you want to answer or I can answer, whichever you prefer. I will tell you my favorite use of a task so far because tasks are good for tasks are good for if you have like a new account manager or CSR and you have the ad policy um, activity and then you have the tasks of things that they need to do. They need to get the, get the it's like a little mini checklist within the activity, gather the underwriting information, contact the underwriter, you know, do all that kind of stuff. But my favorite my favorite use of tasks, um, we had a client that um, wanted added to their ad account activity, whenever they added an account, um, a specifically an employee account, they wanted, um, they set up a separate activity for um, adding the employee account. So whenever they add an account, they have to drop down and pick employee. But it would say, it would be a checklist of everything that you have to do, because when you add somebody in Epic, you have to remember to add them as an employee first and then add their user ID and check their logs and do their security groups and set up their emails with so many different things within just adding an employee. So that was my favorite use of, of the tasks. Yeah. Do you all have any other ones? Yeah. It, like, I mean, like you said, it's basically a way to make sure every, every piece of that workflow for an activity is completed. So it's just a way to have some good checks and balances and, you know, making sure almost I like for a transaction too would be really good or for an endorsement. Did we bill mm -hmm. the endorsement? Was the in, invoice sent to the, to the client? Did we receive the billing? So it's like, and you can assign tasks to different people. They don't have to always be your, even if it's your activity, they don't have to always be your tasks. You can assign tasks to others. Um, so it's just a kind of a good way to make sure that every piece of that workflow is completed. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And then someone go. asked, um, how do we configure the home screen for a report quick view? So I wanted to take over that question, um, you know, because I related to what I talked about earlier. So oh. depending on if you have access to reports, I know in my past life, I didn't have access to reports. It was just a security feature that that agency had turned on. So you might not be able to access certain or all of the reports available under, you know, the report section. Let me drag that over here real quick. Give me one second. So, but if you do, or if there's reports that you want management to assign to report quick view, you know, you can go and just find a report, right click and select deliver as report quick view. So if you have that option, if you are able to access reports, that's how you can deliver it to your own quick view report or quick view section. But if you don't have access to certain or all reports, discuss with management, hey, I want to see missed renewals. Can you send that to my reports quick view? Very good. Oops. Okay, I'm kind of kind of jump around here. We've had so many questions. Um, yeah. Great questions. <laughs> I have a question. Can you show view all notes again? Um, and can you also show view all notes from within an activity because it's not the same menu from here and then in the client. Right. So I've right clicked to view all notes here. And when you click it, it shows you the newest one on the top in descending order you can go to ascending order. So now you can read all of your notes there like that. I know, Lauren, you used to say hit enter in between to give you this nice space, but applied actually caught up to you. And so okay. you don't have to hit enter anymore. I didn't hit enter for any of these notes. So it puts a nice space in between there. And yeah. then when you go to the actual, when you're within the activity, 
And I think this might ask, I might be able to answer another question while we're here too. Um, but within the activity, so here are all your notes here. There's a little hyperlink all the way over on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. um, so when you click view all notes there, that gives you the same view. And it always starts with the newest first. I like to read it like a story personally. It's because it tells the story. That's great. It does. It does. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think we showed these. You'll see these hyperlinks throughout too. servicing right. contacts. And if they are filled in, then you'll be able to get right to your um, your servicing people all the way down to the PRBR. It won't tell you the commission percent, but it'll tell you who's on the PRBR tab there. And that's you'll just see that throughout Epic servicing contacts. You'll see these little hyperlinks here. I did find, however, if it is a package policy, the servicing links hyperlink does not work. I, I'm assuming it's because that's right. I'm assuming it's because it's easy to kind of overlook that apply to all lines when you're entering in a servicing um, the servicing tab. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't work, obviously, if your you know your business auto line didn't have your servicing accounts, but your commercial umbrella line did on that package policy. So I'm assuming that's why that they um, they lock that down for package policies. Mm -hmm. I just went out to the main activity screen and here's the servicing contact link too. But if you ever look at these bottom sections, they'll always give you more information without having to click in. Um, Ashley Dalton had asked that, are there any, any other shortcuts that can help to eliminate extra clicks? If you will, will look down at the bottom, you can't modify this in any way or change the information that you're given that's hard coded, but it will show you um, It'll show you a lot. That's on the also on the policy screen. You can do that too, so you can see um, if this were agency bill, which in this case it is. That's where the invoice would go. Your ICO and PPE, because you don't always remember the the codes, so you can see them spelled out down here. Mm -hmm. um, there's some more information there. Got another question here. Um, I've been told you can highlight a list of tasks and close them all at once instead of clicking on every individual task to close it, but I can never seem to get that to work. Can you show that? Do we have tasks open on an activity? Um, I don't know if we do, but we can real quick add a couple. All right. Lots of good questions here. That is a good question. And, th and that reminds me that I didn't show on the home screen how you can close multiple activities at one time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. All right. We only want to do that for cleanup, not just because we want to get rid of all of our activities. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So here's our two tasks. So click on the status, status. Uh, checkbox. Oh, yeah. there, there you go. You go. Mm -hmm. Completed. Okay. Now I learned something new. I'm glad I attended this webinar. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Another thing uh, while you're in your client there, uh, not in the activity screen, but well, actually in the activity screen, I'm sorry. I don't have a question here about it, but one person asked how you can eliminate some clicks. If you go back into the detail of your uh, activity there, um, if you just will click on the detail there, yeah, one neat feature that a lot of folks I don't see utilize very much um, is that who to contact in the middle of your screen. Um, so that is something that can help you um, work your activities even more from your home screen because you can email them from there and you can type in that. You don't have to mm -hmm. choose an act, like somebody from the contacts. Uh, yeah. So that's another way you can eliminate some clicks. You don't have to go into the client to do things. A lot of times you could just do it there from your home screen, like they showed you with the, the shortcuts. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I did mention the phone, but the email I did not mention. So you could put the email in right there. Cool. If they're cool. a contact, it pulls it. Um, if they're not, you can just reform it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Cool. Um, and then over here, saving yourself some clicks, um, say you had two or three download activities. Sometimes you'll get, you know, two or three and you want to close them all at once. This is what I was talking about. You can you can shift and click and highlight everything in between and then add a note to all three, close all three, reassign all three. This, this is actually good when you have somebody leave and you want to reassign their activities to somebody else because there's a utility. Oh, the utility will reassign their activities. Never mind. Um, 
but you can reassign a few, you know, if you take over a client or if you hit click, you can highlight just a few instead of all of them. I have one comment, not necessarily a question, but <laughs> it kind of goes hand in hand with a question. Um, one person noted about attachments. So we're switching, switching gears from activities to attachments. Okay. Um, question was related to how do you mark an import, a, a document as an important document? Mm -hmm. um, ah, and yes. Lisa shared information and said you could also click important documents to just view those. Yes, uh, that is a new feature in Epic. Mm -hmm. um, let me click over here and you can see where it says show only important policy documents. But if you want to make it as you're dragging and dropping, there'll be a checkbox. But you can right click, edit the attachment detail. And so if you added it to the account and you meant to add it to the activity, oh no, you you can come in here, edit the activity detail. You can mark it as an important policy document. This is actually attached to the account, the activity, and the policy. Um, I think that's by default um, because I that was the um, APOL. But you can actually attach it to other things as well. You can attach it to a claim, an opportunity, um, and you can have it attached certain several different places. If you wanted to put it in a folder, which you don't want to because that's scandalous, um, <laughs> but you can mark it here um, or you can put it in a folder if you want here. If you want it to have some privacy, a lot of you have like HIPAA, um, you can put it in a HIPAA you know, put the access as HIPAA so that only your employee benefits people can see it. But that's that's what you do. And then um, when you click show only important policy documents, it'll show only those with the click on it. Mm -hmm. So okay. with the check on it. Um, have another question. And this, I believe, kind of goes, you know, for both of you guys, uh, both of your areas that you discussed today. Um, question is about commercial workflows. They are less than two years on Epic and we're taught everything should be attached to the event. I believe she means activity. Activities are event driven mm -hmm. uh, and not necessarily to the policy. Um, this She is used to filtering by policy attachments and not the event or activity. Is there an advantage to attaching to the event activity uh, versus the policy? And what is the best or what do we recommend? Sorry, Barbara, I reworded your question a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you, the, the, the choices, uh, Jenny mentioned it for, uh, a little bit uh, earlier, but um, it, it's kind of to help with organization, like only keep the policy documents attached to the policy. That way you're only, when you filter down to access attachments, when you have a hot policy highlighted, you're only seeing those most important documents. It's not, you know, filled with a whole bunch of back and forth correspondence versus the event driven activity. You can have everything related to that activity or that workflow attached to, attached to the activity instead. And that way, you can go just to okay. Did I actually email the the carrier for for this change request? You can filter. You can go to that endorsement activity to see you know what was the last step. So that you know everything is kind of related to that workflow is attached to that activity versus having it all under one place where it can kind of get a little junked up and more difficult to find things. Mm -hmm. Uh, another really good question uh, that one of our viewers had was, I need a better way to attach emails mm -hmm. uh, because I'm a little bit behind on attaching, get about 100 emails a day. Um, and so I was thinking, uh, not necessarily for received emails, but for sending emails, the Outlook add-in would be a great uh, way to capture those in attachments before um, instead of having to go back to your sent box and drag and drop those. Uh, let's see if we can grab a couple more here real quick. I did see I did see a question. I don't know if it's still there or not. Maybe we um, answered it on the just in the Q&A, but someone had mentioned how every time she logs out and then logs back in, <clears throat> excuse me, her activities, her home screen activities does not default or does it goes back to something, another default. It never stays with what she wants. So um, just wanted to show again, you can set your activity view under configure and that customized home base. 
and then do activities to display. Mm -hmm. So if you always want open through today or open plus a few days, you can have that set and that will, every time you log in and out, it will always save that, um, that display for your activities. Yep, very good. <laughs> Um, I'm going to answer one last question because it's super easy. Uh, <laughs> so question is, how do we get the applied add-in for Outlook? Um, you actually have two options there. One, it's very technical. So if you're using the desktop app, I would highly recommend contacting Applied to do that. I mean, I did make it through at one time, but I wouldn't put that on anybody. <laughs> so if you don't have it, contact Applied. But now in the browser version of Epic, uh, if you're using that, you can click on help and you can click on the connectivity suite and there is an Outlook add-in option there as well. So that's probably the easiest way to do it because it's just there ready for you to load, um, but you may have to contact Applied to actually get it added in um, if, if you're not seeing that on the desktop. Uh, so we wanted to just share a few ways that Kite Tech can help uh, with your agency. Um, for our account, or, I'm sorry, our agency consulting department does lots of different types of projects. We help with applied Epic migrations, optimization. So if you've been on Epic for a little while and uh, you know, you're looking to improve some of the processes that you have in place, um, you certainly can reach out to us for that. We do auditing as well, targeted auditing, which is a very cool feature that we offer now. Um, we also have accounting support and training and cleanup, all things accounting. And we can do workflow development, all kinds of reports, employee training. And now uh, one of our latest new offerings is proposals and custom forms, which we're really excited about. So uh, that is gonna wrap us up for today. Thank you, Kelly and Jenny, for such a great presentation. And thank you, attendees, for all of your great questions. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us today and hope that today's presentation has provided some, some good strategies for working more efficiently in EPIC. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Kite Tech's IT and consulting services, please feel free to reach out using any of the ways listed here. We would be happy to meet with you and learn more about your agency's technology or consulting needs. As we mentioned earlier, we will be sharing the recording with you in a few days. Uh, so just another reminder is to please fill out our survey. Uh, we um, are offering, again, a drawing for uh, a free agency consulting assessment. If you do fill out that survey, uh, we'd love to know what you thought about our presentation today uh, and also are looking for some ideas for future presentations. So. Thanks again for attending, everyone. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.